at one particular time when she was on the phone, he had her on speaker, and she told him, you're not the dad, you don't have to do nothing for this baby. Harassment. You're Nina, right. You heard it you're yourself. Right. I heard it Tam. myself. How long ago was, I want to say like a year, a year, a little bit more than a year. So that shocked me and I was just like, I mean, you know, that's a big pill to swallow when your dad actually does know that he could potentially not be your dad and has never mentioned it. Telling me to babysit. Well, why would I be babysitting my child? So he told me to be there babysitting. This man is telling you when to be there to take care of your child? Yes. Who is this person? It's her Papa Bear. That's her nickname for him. Ms. Sims kicks off the case with a bombshell, accusing her mother and the man she thought was her dad of pulling the wool over her eyes about her paternity for a whopping 36 years. She's armed with evidence she claims proves Mr. Johnson isn't her biological father, leading her to file a lawsuit for paternity fraud. Buckle up, because this is just the tip of the iceberg. Ms. Sims, you say your mother and your alleged father intentionally deceived you for 36 years year by claiming that Mr. Johnson is your biological father for paternity fraud because you claim to have proof that you are not his daughter. Just when you think you've seen it all, Ms. Sims dives deep into her doubts about Mr. Johnson actually being her dad, pointing out medical and family history inconsistencies that don't line up with Mr. Johnson's. Her distress over being duped her whole life affects not just her, but her daughter too. The emotional stakes are high, and what's coming next is going to stir the pot even more. Ms. Sims, so what do you mean they deceived you. Well, for my whole life, um, I've always thought that um, Henry, my dad, I just have a multitude of things that have come up that show me that it potentially could not be, including my health and my daughter's health. We don't have any family history that is consistent throughout the family of my dad's family. This twist will knock your socks off. Ms. Sims reminisces about her childhood days spent with Mr. Johnson, highlighting a bond so strong it defined her identity. Despite the swirling doubts, she treasures the relationship, emphasizing his positive influence on her life. The story takes a deeper dive next, so keep your eyes peeled. I met my dad when I was four years old, so I mean a little later than most people, but after I was introduced to him, I spent a lot of time with him. He made me who I am today, he made me strong, he made me very, very responsible. He was a person that definitely encouraged me to be a better person always. So yes, I'm definitely a daddy's girl. Did that really just drop? Mr. Johnson confesses he's always harbored doubts about being Ms. Sims's biological father, but kept mum to protect their bond. His unwavering commitment to her doesn't waver, though he admits the current paternity debacle might have dented her trust in him. Brace yourself. The revelations up next are even juicier. I've always known there was some doubt and sense, but I never mentioned it to her because I didn't see any reason for it. Maybe she has less trust in me now, but it doesn't affect the way I feel about her. You say you feel like she may have less trust in you. Yeah. Do you feel that way? I, I mean, in, in a small, small aspect, yes. I mean, my mom and my dad, I mean, because together, I mean, they raised me. So together, they knew that there was an opportunity that someone else could be my biological father. You'll need to sit down for this one. A major twist unfolds as Ms. Sims discusses her lupus diagnosis, which sparked her suspicions about her paternity. The lack of autoimmune diseases in her family history led her down a path of questionings and seeking the truth about her real dad. Strap in, because the family drama escalates from here. It made you realize that there could be another possible. So in 2001, I was diagnosed with lupus. And you know how when you go through your physical, like they say, give me your family history and things yes. of that nature where I have no, no autoimmune disorder on either side of my mother or father's family. And so I just rolled that out. Um, throughout that, I went to nursing school and I became a nurse. And with more research and really understanding the disease, I realized that it could be hereditary, could be some background to the things that are wrong. Grab your popcorn. This is getting good. The plot thickens as Ms. Sims details a poignant conversation with her father where he admits there's a chance he might not be her real dad. This bombshell not only rocks her world, but sets the stage for more explosive truth to come. Get ready, because the courtroom is about to turn up the heat. Well, we actually, I actually talked to my dad first because, you know, you don't ever want to you know, insult anyone or anything like that. And I actually talked to my dad about it. My dad kind of was like, well, yeah, you know, I kind of agree that there may be a chance that you're not mine and he, and I will support you to look, you know, to look at, look for your person. How long ago was, I want to say like a year, a year, a little bit more than a year. So that shocked me and I was just like, I mean, you know, that's a big pill to swallow when your dad actually does know that he could potentially not be your dad and has never mentioned it. Are you ready for this roller coaster? Ms. Smith, the mother, steps into the spotlight admitting there's a chance Mr. Johnson isn't the biological father, which unravels the story of their past relations and a fleeting romantic fling. This confession adds another layer of complexity to the paternity puzzle. The next testimonies will make your jaw drop. Mr. Johnson, what do you remember? You say you only had sex with Ms. Smith one time? We were seeing each other for about two months as friends. One day we took a shower together and we ended up in the bed having sex. 
Did you know she was in another relationship at the time? Yes, I did. That's why it took me so long. Oh, that's why you didn't try to have sex with her sooner. But then this day after the shower, all bets were off. Yes, <laughs> yes ma'am. Yes, Your Honor. The tension could be cut with a knife. Ms. Sims sheds light on discrepancies in her family narrative, notably her last name and the unexpected name listed as her father on her birth certificate. Definitely not Mr. Johnson. This revelation triggers a crucial turning point in her quest for the truth. Keep watching because the courtroom drama is about to hit a fever pitch. The father's name, there is another man's name, not Henry Johnson. Not Henry Johnson. So you had a name. Yes, I had a name. And I mean, the way it's explained to us or to me is that that was just an act, you know, and consistently me and my siblings all had the same last name. So as big a deal because we still all had the same name. And my mom just said, well, I gave you my last name. The moment of truth is almost here. As we edge closer to the verdict, the courtroom buzzes with anticipation. Ms. Sims underscores the importance of establishing her biological father's identity, not just for personal clarity, but for vital medical reasons affecting her family's future. The DNA results are imminent, and you won't believe what's about to unfold. Once again, I said, you know, I'm a nurse and a mom, and just with my knowledge of medical history and background, it's important for me to identify, you know, if, if there's someone else and I can kind of trace their history to see if there's other genetic diseases that I need to be worried about. Also, my daughter may one day want to have a, you know, have a family too, and is it something that she should be worried about? Do not want to lose another one to something that I can, you know, avoid by just a little bit of information and doing things before, you know, it happens versus hindsight. You won't believe this ending. The DNA test results are finally unveiled. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Johnson, you are the father. <laughs> Here we go, right out of the gate. Ms. Moore claims Mr. Butler doubts his paternity due to his manipulative wife. The audience reacts audibly. Mr. Butler counters, saying, Ms. Moore herself has repeatedly told him he's not the father. Get ready, because the drama is just heating up. Ms. Moore, you say there is only one reason the defendant, Mr. Butler, has doubts he fathered your one-year-old daughter, and that's because of his manipulating wife. Mr. Butler, you argue you've been told on multiple occasions by the plaintiff Hearst that you are not her child's father. Now, isn't this a spike? twist. The judge probes Mr. Butler about his doubts. Mr. Butler reveals that Ms. Moore told him directly that he wasn't the father during a confrontation with his wife, which adds tension in the courtroom. Strap in, folks. The roller coaster is just taking off. She told me I'm not the baby daddy. One time was because he was harassing me, him and his so-called quote-unquote wife. So you admit, Ms. Moore, you told him you're not the child's father. One time. How did that conversation happen? It's happened because she told me I'm not the dad. She told me I'm not the father. Why would she tell you that? The baby don't even look like me. Did everyone catch Catch that revelation. A key witness, Ms. Harrison, recalls an incident where she heard Ms. Moore denying Mr. Butler's paternity over a phone call, amplifying the doubt about the paternity and leading to further disputes between the involved parties. The plot thickens, so stay tuned for more twists. One time. That's a lie. Harassment. Really harassment? Harassment. I ain't never you harassed your you so-called husband. Whatever. At one particular time when she was on the phone, he had her on speaker, and she told him, you're not the dad, you don't have to do nothing for this baby. Harassment. You're Ew, right. You heard it you're yourself. Right. I heard it myself. You won't see this coming. Ms. Harrison challenges the conception dates provided by Ms. Moore, suggesting discrepancies in the timeline that could affect paternity. The discussion heats up as both parties dispute the dates and the possible fathers, highlighting the complexity of the situation. Things are about to go into overdrive. Why we have the doubt? Because that's why we're here. Say the conception dates don't add up. Because if you told him in December that you were pregnant, your baby would have been born in September, because my daughter's September 22nd. And so... She needs to learn our math. Go back to school. And so That's what you need on, to do. Moore. Go back Ms. to school. Moore. Buckle up for this emotional ride. Ms. Moore describes a difficult birth process involving an emergency C-section, which Mr. Butler was not informed about nor present for, raising questions about his involvement and concern as a potential father. The upcoming segment is a doozy, so keep watching. I actually went into labor. I started having labor pains on the 25th. My blood pressure went sky high. My doctor came in and told me that my baby heart rate was going down. So as it was going down, she was getting less oxygen, so they had to get her out. I did not see my baby. I went to an emergency C-section. Just when you think it can't get more tangled, the court examines photographic evidence suggesting another man might be the child's father. The conversation revolves around who was present during the child's early life and the naming on the birth certificate, which does not list Mr. Butler. The drama continues, so don't go anywhere. This is the he same man up. that, that, that went she to every missed. doctor's yes. appointment. That looks just oh, No, you a liar on that they one. They do look no. just alike. My fiance oh, is no. way finer than him. The other reason is the baby doesn't carry his last name. He 
She's never shown him the birth certificate. That there may be another man listed on the birth certificate. No. Wait for it. Here it comes. The DNA test results are revealed. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Butler, you are her father. Miss Vaughn steps into the courtroom, aiming to prove to her husband, Mr. Williams, that he is indeed the father of their one-year-old son, Connor Williams. She believes their marriage was just a quick fix because of the unexpected pregnancy, and since she's filed for divorce, Mr. Williams has stepped back from his fatherly duties. On top of that, she's hitting him with a lawsuit for one two seventy-five by dollars for daycare costs. Strap in, because this ride is just getting started. Miss Vaughn, you are here to prove to your husband, Mr. Williams, that he is the father of your one-year-old child, Connor Williams. You say the only reason the two of you got married was because of the sin. Now that you filed for divorce, he refuses to be a father. Now, you're also suing the defendant for $1,275 for daycare expenses. And here comes the curveball. Mr. Williams counters with doubts about his paternity, accusing Miss Vaughn of using him as a cash machine and hinting that she might have another man in the mix, whom he labels the real dad. This sets the stage for a fiery clash over who's really responsible for little Connor and the crumbled state of their marriage. And trust me, you'll want to stick around for what's next. You also believe Miss Vaughn has a secret sugar daddy and have that man throughout your entire relationship and he's the real father. What has Mr. Williams done for Connor? Brian hasn't did anything for him. The only thing he has done was buy two cases of diapers and furnish two outfits when he was a newborn. And he watched him while I was at work for a couple times, but it's not enough of a month full of Sunday. Just when you thought it couldn't get more tangled, Mr. Williams spills the tea about campus rumors that have been fanning the flames of his doubt, suggesting that he might not be Connor's dad after all. This revelation adds another layer of drama and skepticism to the ongoing marital saga. And guess what? It's about to get even juicier. You say you had people telling you she was promiscuous and she was having sex with other people and the yeah, child because, may not be yours? Because I did disclaim that at one putting me in the doghouse, so it gave me a lot of free time to not be with her. And by the doghouse, I Brian's mean we lying, were not being honor. intimate. We were not always together Brian's days, lying. for days at a time. Did you have doubt married her. Yes, Your Honor. Oh, and it turns out family pressures were at an all-time high. The court learns about the heavy expectations from both families, especially from Miss Vaughn's mother, who insisted they tie the knot to avoid any scandal of having a child out of wedlock. This revelation peels back another layer of complexity in their relationship. But hang on, the next bit is a real eyebrow raiser. I requested to meet her mother because I didn't believe that a parent would be in support well, you just find out of this. Was pregnant your and so it. his father and I requested to meet her. We actually went to her house and after having the discussion with her and she shared with us then the next step was for them to get married because her grandchild she never said their child her grandchild was not coming into this world of bass we realized that she was the one driving the bus on this relationship been pregnant who got pregnant by brian Talk about throwing a wrench in the works. Mr. Williams throws down the gauntlet with allegations of a sugar daddy in the mix, dubbed Papa Bear, who he claims has been pulling the strings behind the scenes. This bombshell hints at possible infidelity and throws an even bigger wrench into the already complicated paternity issue. You're not going to want to miss what comes out of the woodwork next. Mr. Williams, you say she's got a sugar daddy. What is this all about in your mind? It was, it was a phone call that I received. I'm not sure how he even obtained my number, but he was telling me to babysit. Well, why would I be babysitting my child? So he told me to be there babysitting. This man is telling you when to be there to take care of your child? Yes. Who is this person? It's her Papa Bear. That's her nickname for him. Things just got real with receipts. The court dives into some spicy social media exchanges between Miss Vaughn and Papa Bear discussing DNA tests and daddy duties. These messages crank up the drama notch and solidify Mr. Williams's suspicions about the whole fatherhood fiasco. But hold on, the next part will knock your socks off. Insinuating that he's not calling him daddy right now because that's not. So you're reading these Facebook messages and you, you've got your wife calling a man Papa Bear. They're going back and forth on Facebook and he's saying by next month the baby will be calling me daddy and you're reading messages about somebody needing to get a DNA test and you're feeling like this is pointing to you and the fact that you may not be Connor's biological father. Yes. Here's where it gets downright scandalous. Miss Vaughn drops a bombshell by admitting to an ongoing intimate relationship with Papa Bear despite still being married to Mr. Williams. This revelation seriously shakes up the court's perception of her credibility and the 
State of Their Union. The stakes are high, and the courtroom's about to heat up even more. Have you been intimate with Papa Bear? Is it an intimate relationship or just best friends? We are an intimate relationship. Oh, you are in an intimate relationship. Unless you're still married, though. Oh, where's that? You get it from your mama. No, you get your behavior from your mother because okay, but we've you never don't been know on 31st anything. Hold on, have hold to... on. Brian. Miss Vaughn, I want to be clear. You're still married to Mr. Williams. We're separated, yes. Yeah. You're separated Legally. from Mr. Williams, but you are intimate with Papa Bear guy. And now, the money matter takes center stage. Miss Vaughn presents proof of her hefty childcare payments, which Mr. Williams apparently hasn't helped with, spotlighting the financial and personal strife accompanying their paternity and relationship turmoil. Just wait till you see how this financial feud plays out. So these are the child, the receipts for childcare. Yes, for Connor Williams, you know, his daddy's. All right, so this is three months of childcare. Pretty and I get no government assistance, so it's straight cash. This is $2,550. You know a child has to have someone to care for. She's been paying out this money so she can go to work. Have you helped her with this $2,550? Or have you at least said, while you're working, I will watch him so we don't have to incur this expense? Yes, Your Honor. Ready for the grand finale? The DNA test results are in. It has been determined by this court. Mr. William, you are the father. <laughs> hey, pay, pay the lady. Mm. Can you believe what just happened? Mr. Matthews just admitted that one of his biggest mistakes was not being a good dad to his daughter, Kiana. Now she's wondering if he's really her biological father. He's here in court today to prove he is. But then Ms. Shaw says her daughter used to think Mr. Matthews was her dad, but now believes another man is her real father. Just when you think it couldn't get more confusing, hold on for what's next. Mr. Matthews, you say you've made many mistakes in your life, but the worst is not being a good dad to the defendant's daughter. You claim that has caused her to deny you are her daughter's father. You are here to prove the truth. She biologically is yours. Miss Shaw, you admit your daughter believed that Mr. Matthews was her dad, but now stand in court, prove that another man is her biological father. Did you catch that twist? Mr. Matthews talks about his past mistakes and how they messed up his relationship with Kiana and her mom. He tried to reconnect with Kiana on Facebook, but she was still angry because of his past. Admitting his regrets, Mr. Matthews talks about the deep scars left on his family. Get ready, because this emotional roller coaster isn't over yet. Mr. Matthews, you say you've made mistakes. Tell me about that. When I was younger, I had a lot of mistakes in my life, so I can understand that Miss would want to act the way she does. When I tried to reach out to her on Facebook, she was kind of angry at me because of my episodes in my life. So you're saying you were not a good father? Not at all. And so your belief is that this whole issue is surrounding your failure to be a good father? That's true. Who saw that coming? In a past court session, Mr. Matthews denied having a relationship with Ms. Shaw during a DNA test, but now admits he lied. This opens up a messy past full of cheating and lies. And guess what? The surprises keep coming. No wonder you said you never had sex with this woman. <laughs> And you had a husband. Yes. All right, so you two were basically cheating on your spouses with one another. Yes, Your Honor. All right, so you get to the magistrate, says, I've never had sex with that woman, and how does the magistrate rule? The magistrate looked and asked me, did I want to go for it? And I told him no. That wasn't what happened. Oh, you were so angry at that I point was, that I he was, lied. I was done. I never approached after that point. His wife already knew at that point about Kiana. How's that for a twist? Kiana shares how she felt like an outsider at Mr. Matthews' house. She points out how he loved his other kids, but ignored her, showing how much it hurt her. The family drama gets even more intense in the next testimony. And the way I looked at it is we both was having fun. We both was young. You know, and when she told me she was pregnant, I was too busy trying to enjoy myself because I wasn't trying to be with no one woman. I already had a wife. So the point is, when you stood in the courtroom with your wife and you said you never slept with Miss Shaw, was that because you were scared to lose your wife or is that yes. because you did not want to be bothered with a child? A little bit of both. But Miss Shaw, you said that Kiana had already been going over to their house. Yes. Ready for this? Mr. Matthews talks about being in and out of Kiana's life and admits he wasn't a good father. He wants to fix his mistakes now, admitting how much his neglect hurt Kiana. Hang on, because the story gets even more dramatic soon. You decided, I'm not even going to be bothered with trying to prove that he is right. my daughter's biological father. Yes, yeah, sure. But did you know for certain that he was? You had a paternity doubt, but you just weren't going to be bothered with him because he lied. He was not the only man that I had slept with. Other Were you honest about husband? that, Miss Thompson, your daughter? Yes. She's no all her life. Think it can't get more tangled? Think again. A heated argument reveals both Mr. Matthews and Ms. Shaw were cheating on each other when Kiana was conceived. This shows their chaotic relationship and the deep trust issues. Get ready, because the revelations get even crazier. And well, here it is. Wait, 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 okay, but you had threw him out. Yeah. But then when I came over there, you, you had him rubbing but, your stomach and all that good stuff. And, I had my and stomach. Here, Stop yes, that. you did. Yes, you did. Stop that and here it is. 
<laughs> talking about bring me a fish sandwich over to the house, and I'm bringing you like... That fish sandwich is when you're pregnant. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I used to crave those, too. That was funny. You said that. I said, now, nah, that testimony is true. Yeah, and but, every night when he would get off, me feed he would come too. and feed me. All right, then. You'll need a minute for this. Mr. Matthews talks about his reluctance to accept he might be Kiana's dad, influenced by his family and his own doubts. This part shows the intense family pressures he faced. As we get closer to the truth, the tension is high. Seeing the baby, because Miss Shaw was living at the time, you know, rumors fly around. First, my grandmother told my mother, then my mother told me, and I was like, nah, you know, I'm not gonna sit back there and say yes. What did they say? She said, well, the baby look like you. I said, no, I just, no, it don't. I'm not gonna sit back because I didn't want my wife to know. Well, my mother told my wife. And when you're in them kind of circumstances, you don't wanna sit back and admit that, you know, just a baby may be yours. Ever wonder what a hospital soap opera looks like? The courtroom hears about the chaotic scene at Kiana's birth with multiple potential fathers. This adds even more complexity, showing the wild relationships and tangled stories around Kiana's arrival. The stakes are high as we move to the next big reveal. So if any time he come over, yes, he can come and stay. Every time I came over there, you made me feel like I was comfortable at your house. Yeah, you because rubbing me down. You, and, if I, I mean, tell you, you cooking come, dinner. It, it, I yes. mean, and, I'm cooking dinner. I'm, I mean, I'm welcoming you because that's my house. How can a woman sit back there and say that you was married, but you would sit back there and act like you was Lord, married? Lord, no, to me? he didn't. Oh, yes, I did. Was I the only one married? Oh. Can Kiana find the dad she's been longing for? The court looks into whether Mr. Matthews is really her father, amidst all the complicated personal histories. Kiana talks about her feelings towards Mr. Matthews, showing how his on and off presence affected her. The moment of truth is coming, and it's a big one. He's the father of my youngest son. And a lot of her, like the way she fa she favors his mom and whatever she needed, he was always there. Did she ever tell you that she believed Mr. Brooks was really your biological yeah. father? He also writes me on Facebook and he'll talk to me and stuff, but I just don't, I guess don't see it. Interesting is Mr. Matthews is here to prove that he is your biological father. Ready for the big reveal? The paternity test results are in. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Matthew, you are not the father. I'm wow. so sorry, Kim.